my name's Alistair Chapman and in this session we're going to look at ProRes RAW in FCPX. So that's how do you get your footage into FCPX and how do you handle it and edit it in Final Cut Pro. So before we go any further there's a few terms that I want to clarify so that we all know what I'm talking about. The first one is HDR. What is HDR? Well it's high dynamic range and that can either mean uh, high dynamic range display such as a high dynamic range TV or monitor or it could mean material that has a high dynamic range and that would include raw or log footage most material shot with raw or in log has a high dynamic range so HDR high dynamic range and the other one is wide color gamut or WCG and this basically means any material or any content with a wider range of colors, a wider color palette than you would have with Rec. 709. So within FCPX, when we're working with ProRes RAW, we're going to be working with material that has a high dynamic range and also has a wide, a very broad color palette. So we're going to want to use uh, WCG, wide color gamut, to be able to get the most out of that material. Another term you're going to hear in this session is tone mapping. And tone mapping is what happens whenever you transfer material from one range uh, of color and gamut to another. So that could be converting the ProRes RAW to 709 or to log. So tone mapping is whenever you convert something that has one color range and one contrast range to another. It's nothing more sophisticated than that and it's something that has been around for a long time. But because when we shoot with RAW we're shooting in a format that is different to our delivery format, we will need to do some tone mapping to get from the way the RAW is recorded to the way we want to deliver our material. It's worth noting that many types of tone mapping are actually destructive. So for example with ProRes RAW we're going to be capturing with a huge dynamic range but in many cases displaying that on a monitor or a device with a much more limited dynamic range. So we need to convert the material via tone mapping from that high dynamic range to the viewable range and in doing so we will lose some of the material's original tonality. But that's not necessarily a bad thing provided you do it the correct way. So let's have a look at the post-production workflow that I typically use. So the first thing I like to do is to take my original files. Uh, I've got some here. These are from uh, Shogun. And I'm going to copy these uh, to a new folder. So I'm just going to create a new folder here and uh, copy the files to there. OK, so I've copied my files. Now I'm going to go into uh, Final Cut Pro and we'll work through the workflow that I use with ProRes RAW. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new library for my content. And I go File, New Library. And that library I'm going to save in the same location as where my footage is. That way I can keep the footage, the library and everything else uh, together. And we'll call it ProRes RAW Workflow and click Save. Now one of the reasons for creating a separate library for this is because we're probably going to change this library uh, to turn off FCP's tone mapping in a little bit. But we'll come to that in a moment. So I have my new library. Next I want to import my media. And I have here the import media arrow or I can go to this one up here top left of the screen or I can go file import media and any of those methods will open up the media import window. And then I simply navigate to wherever my material is. So here's my files and you can either select an individual clip to bring it in or you can bring in the uh, whole file just by clicking on the folder. Now before I do that though, if we look over on the right hand side, we've got some options. I have one here that says copy to FCP files. Personally, I don't like using this because what this will do is copy all my footage to my central FCP file library. So you end up with everything in the same place on the same drive. It fills up your drive very, very quickly, etc. I prefer to use the leave files in place option so my footage will remain where I saved it and I find managing the files and the, the media uh, easier doing it this way but you have to decide for yourself which works for you. Coming a bit further down we also have some transcoding options here create optimized media or create proxy media 
on even a modest uh, fairly recent Mac you won't need to use this so I'm simply going to select the folder here to bring the whole folder in and click import selected won't take very long because the files are all aren't being moved they're staying where they are so it's just a case of bringing the files into uh, my library now next thing I'm going to do is create a new project so I'm going to go file new project and again I'm going to call this ProRes Raw workflow and there are some other options to look at here uh, one in particular is the the format we're going to work in so this was shot in uh, 4k and UHD so I'm going to choose 4k and my resolution 3840 by 2160 now the raw will often be DCI 4096 by 2048 and we could work with that but as I'm going to be outputting this for viewing on a UHD TV or YouTube, things like that. I'm going to leave this at 3840 by 2160. And my frame rate 24p, well, that's the frame rate that I want for my project. Um, it does actually, in this case, match the frame rate that I shot at. So I'll leave that at 24p. Now, in terms of rendering and output here, um, I've got ProRes 422HQ chosen. You could go up to ProRes 444 if you're doing something super ultra mega critical and it might give you a little bit extra but for working with raw content by the time you've encoded it and everything else apple prores 422 hq is probably all that anybody actually needs and that will produce a fabulous result without the file size getting uh, bigger than it needs to be so that's why i choose that one so click ok and we now have our new project now let's have a look at um, some of these clips so one of the things I want to just check on if I click on this clip here and if I go over to the right hand side of the screen I have my inspector now if you don't have the inspector over here I just clicked on the little I you go to window and you go to show in workspace and make sure that the inspector here is enabled and that allows you to click on the little I here which is the inspector for the clip and I just would like to check that the my raw to log conversion is set correctly. And you can see here that it's set to Sony SL3 S Gamma 3 Cine. This was shot on a Sony camera. So that's the one I want. If, you, if it was shot on a Canon camera, you'd use the Canon transform. And then below that, you'll see that we have a LUT selected. And the LUT needs to match the raw to log conversion. And this is one of the built-in LUTs that we have within FCP. You can also add custom LUTs, and I'll come back to that uh, in, in a moment. Um, so we want to just check that that's all set correctly for the clips that we're going to use. And if I take uh, one of these clips, let's take uh, this clip here and drop this into, drag it into my timeline. You can see that this all looks pretty good. No real problems with the clip. Um, it's being converted to Rec 709 and it looks as you would expect um, and now let's have a look at some other clips so let's actually have a look at this clip down here this is uh, more interesting I think for what we're doing and this is a clip that was shot overexposed so this was shot a couple of stops brighter to get less noise in the picture and as we can see it looks overexposed because it is you can see here clearly that the clip is really bright now if we go to the color panel to try and adjust this and if I go to the color panel and instead of using the curves, I'm going to use the color board and I could perhaps try and bring the highlights down. And yeah, the highlights do come down, but you see we've got this flat line across here and that's indicating that it's clipped and it, it doesn't look good. Now what's going on here is we're working in a tone mapped color space. So FCP is assuming that we're working with basically standard dynamic range Rec 709 material and that's how we're going to view it, that's how we're going to handle it. So FCP is converting the footage to this limited range. But we can do better than that within FCP and this is one of the nice things. This is one of the really important things to understand about this raw workflow. So if I go to the library over on the left hand side of the screen click on the ProRes RAW uh, library here and I come back over to the right side of the screen again now you'll see that here's my library and if I click modify I can now go into the library and I can modify 
the way the clips in the library are processed. And instead of working in standard dynamic range, we're going to now work in wide gamut HDR. Click OK and change. Now you will see some small changes to your footage. Um, you'll see that the highlights now actually look even more blown out. And that's because we're no longer transforming the clip to a small dynamic range. We're now viewing it in its full range. But my monitor and what you're, how you're viewing this is still Rec. 709. So we need to grade the footage. So back in the color board here now, if I make the highlight adjustment that I made before and I bring those highlights down, notice how now those highlights recover so much better. And if you look at the waveform here, see how this is no longer clipped. We have a nice highlight range. So working in this high range allows us to retain a lot more of the details in those highlights that were lost working in that more limited range. Now if I just do a little, little bit of work on this uh, quickly, let's bring those highlights down a little bit more. And we, we have a look at this now. You can see how the full highlight range is preserved. Those highlights look much better. They look much more natural. This is actually yellow on the, on the real structure. And it looks really good. So when you're working with ProRes RAW, it's really important that you do work in that high dynamic range. If I just change the library back again to standard, and we try and make those same adjustments to the clip, you can see it's actually it's really difficult to get the same looking image. It just really doesn't work as well. It's not as easy to do. The grading is harder. So I really do recommend that instead of working in the narrow range, you change your library to wide gamut HDR. And then you'll find that your grading is so much easier. Your highlights, you have much more control over your highlights and it's much easier to create a good looking clip, good looking image, really fast and really easily. Now the other option is to use your own lookup tables. So if we come back to a clip and we go back to the uh, inspector, instead of using FCPX's own lookup tables, we could use our own. Now most of the lookup tables that you'll find for Sony cameras in particular online are actually designed for sgamut3.cine, so we need to change the raw to log conversion for the clips. And then we go down to the camera LUT selections and we click on the LUT option. You can see I've already got some LUTs loaded, but you can add your own LUTs into this library by going to add custom LUT, then navigate for the LUT that you want to use and click open. But I've already got plenty in here. So I'm gonna choose one of the ones I've previously loaded. And this footage was shot about two and a half stops overexposed. So I'm going to use this LUT here which is one of my VLOOK LUTs. And you can download these from my website and the LUT sets on my website, xdcam-user.com, always include offsets. Um, obviously other people make LUTs as well. And I can click on that to apply that LUT. And you can see that because it's got the offset built in for the exposure, the shot looks correctly exposed without having to do any other work. And you also tend to get a better contrast range, etc., when you use a, a LUT designed for the exposure that you're working at. Now, when you're using your own LUTs as opposed to the FCP LUTs, it doesn't make any difference what color space that you work in because your own LUT takes over the color mapping. So if I click this and I go back to standard um, tone mapping and we click change, you'll see there's absolutely no change to the shot because when you use your own LUTs, you bypass the FCP built-in tone mapping. So my preferred workflow actually is to use LUTs with offsets if you're going to use LUTs because I think that works really well. But if you don't have LUTs with offsets, then you're going to want to work in WGC HDR so that when you're using the standard LUTs, if we go back here and we go back to standard LUT, we can then use the color panel to do our grading and we have access to the full dynamic range of the original clip. So there you are, that's working with ProRes RAW in FCPX.
Oh, 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 oh,